Let's go. Let's go. Sylphid. So I've been saying it's sylphide, like the element? Is it sylphid? Sylphide is an element? Wait, is it? I don't even know, actually. Isn't it sulfide? Oh, sorry, sulfide. I've been saying it like that. Um, <laughs> what is sulfid? What is it even? I don't, know. I don't even. Let's let's look it up. Sylphid. It's a mytholo- Oh, no, that's sylph. <laughs> oh, it's a young sylph, which is a mythological air spirit. Okay. Mm, okay. Hey, Shava, I knew I, was, I meant- it would, I knew sulf. I knew what I was saying. I was saying it said, said like sulfide. Okay. Um, so, anyways, we didn't introduce our players, but we've got Avon Hoki, one of the OG Team Beast members, um, is on Team Beast 2.0, and we've got June, aka Grez, Chris, Chris Cray from last season, who is also on OG Team Beast, and yeah. Okay, is what tier is this? Is tier so two, these are tier, tier threes, three? yeah. Okay, I. why do I feel like I've seen Avon Hokey before? He's, Maybe in stream he, chats, but I've, I'm positive I've seen that name. I don't recognize Grez or June B, though. Um, Avon Hokey, well, he's casted sometimes, and he's... He's played, so he was a player last season. He's played now, and you've probably seen him in something. Ooh, 80s mullet is in the chat. Wow, got a celebrity in here. 80s mullet. Man. That's, that's a great icon. I love that. Maybe I should grow my hair out like that. He, he, he's the guy who designed those... Um, what's it called? Overlays that Doc stole and used... Now on his channel when he casts CPL, <laughs> Beatty's nice, nice. Okay. All right. Well, in this game, we've got a Forge expand from Mr. Avon Hokey. He's doing a good job denying this hatchery from June. Be gotta be careful though. One hit, one hit, one hit. But regardless, June B's floating a lot of money, actually up to 400 minerals. So this was a great delay. But the thing is, is he did lose the probe and. That's all your scouting intelligence. And, you know, we talked about... Oh, is this Nexus actually off? Why does this look far away from the minerals? Is it? Not, let's see. Let's go into... I think it's off. It, even the gas looks really far. Oh, no. Avon Hokey. Like, I'm just comparing it from the distance from the Nexus to that far mineral on the... Like, the... You know, um... Far right... It just looks yeah. so far. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Well, as Future says, that's not ideal. <laughs> it's not ideal. But hopefully, Avon Hokey will be able to bring this back despite the uh, econ disadvantage. Now, I'm wondering, is that Forge Gateway? I don't think that's tight. This does not look tight to like, me. Like, um, Forge's wall thingies to the top side but not down yeah i'm positive the forge gate is not tight yeah. uh, but on the left side with that little like root there i don't know if that's link tight and obviously on the right side where the probe is is not link tight so two openings here but i don't actually think that's a big deal because by the time zerg even tries to do a ling all in you should have two zealots out i mean if this was doc then you you gotta be worried because doc will just swarm you with like 30 speedlings unashamedly and win but this is june june's a little bit more of a passive player likes the three base um five hatch style so so june has manner is what you're basically yeah june's are respectable yeah Luke. you're respectable yeah i don't respect doc holiday he's just <laughs> He's just, he's just there. He's a clown. God, this Nexus is, oh, it hurts. I've done that before too. And it's not just the minerals that are off, it's the gas. Uh oh. It's the dark Nexus, dark matter. You know, I have hokey. Okay, we do have the Stargate. And we actually have June B 
going for it looks pretty standard to me everything is going well and the spire is coming out on time i think so this is looking great for june b and oh man avon hokies even got two on gas in the, in the main i'm i'm hope he fixes that because protoss relies on such gas intensive units that if you don't have you know the gas for templars that's it you're just dead almost and plus one where is it for Avon? That you have. yeah i think right about now is when you would start plus one mm -hmm. if you're going to be going for the sarah zealot timing around uh, seven probably earlier you know like four four you can get it 445 or to 50 to 510 yeah 40 445 is ideal because plus one is two minutes 48 seconds so that basically mm -hmm. lines up perfectly at 730 right uh, so that's that's really the ideal time but we do have three gates coming down for Avon Hokey I'm trying to find okay oh there's no Citadel actually we have a robotics in the natural that makes me think this is going to be Goon Reaver okay interesting I respect that Avon Hokey um, pulling out some cool builds Gerez, um, June, actually. Um, Spire late right now. So that means that this Xer could possibly get an Overlord kill. Avenhoki is being indecisive here. Just going to want to scout everything. So probably there will be Scourge out in time. You're just going to be safe. Yeah, and I like what June B is doing with right now. I don't think we've gotten Supply Block a lot of hatches going down. We've got Evolution Chamber going down at a nice time. We've got Second Extractor done at a nice time. We've got Hydra done at a nice time. Everything is going great for them. So I'm loving this. So it looks like Avan is going for Reaver. He's going for like... I don't even know what this is. This is Uncharted. <laughs> um, okay. Like reverb, but serless. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the this... thing is, it's tough to go that because they can get a couple scourge out, and your shuttle is basically locked down. Yeah, that's why I was thinking it was going to be goon reaver, but I think it is what you said. It's going to be zealot reaver, and Sarah... I mean, even if you're oh. a god and have speed on your on your shuttle. The Scourge can just, you know, right-click your shuttle and it's got to run forever. And I don't see speed coming out, so I feel like that this shuttle will just get insta-picked off. I don't know. And Avonhoki uh, moved, like, four Zealots down. And they're just chilling. They're just chilling at this third. So, plus one is not even close to being done. And I'm a bit afraid for Avonhoki. That his build is not going to work out well against these Hydras. Yeah. You said this is tier 3? Because I'm looking at June B's build, and I'm just like, there's nothing really, you know, off. Like, the drone count is good at all the bases. We well, have Hydras coming out at appropriate times. We have 6 hatch. We have, like, everything well, is great. He's not just any tier three. He's the part of the last season winning team. So oh. it's kind of this is the cream of the crop, pretty much. You know, Team Beast, OG Team Beast. So, but I, yeah, June's pretty good. But I don't know. He might be pushing tier because two. Because I'm watching possible. this and I'm like, how is Doc Holiday in tier two and June Beast <laughs> in tier three? You know, the funny thing is, like, I played june a lot and he plays well to a certain point but then once i you know survive the first couple rounds of the five hatch hydra then the beyond that wow are we getting lag we are okay oh maybe it's me well we can just fix it like this right yeah that's good Anyways, what I was saying is that June, um, pretty good. Like, this is when he's at his highest strength. 
but as the game goes on, it might not be as good. But I, I don't think Avanoki can can defend here. Like, there's no no Templars. Yeah, like Avanoki has a decent army, but Junbi has so much. Like, like I was saying, he's hit basic it almost wow, perfect yeah. for the initial phase. Uh, well, now actually, I mean, Avanoki has a lot of zealots. So this Reavers actually work. These zealots are kind of off in no man's land. There they go. Now they're going to the third base. Actually, there's not a lot here. Only two hydras to defend. This could potentially deal a lot of damage. And now, actually, Junbi's army somehow got dismantled by this zealot reaver. Yeah, there was way too aggressive things with those hydras. Like, taking the first two buildings down is good, but then move forward too much. I lost a ton of drones there. Yeah, but I, I think he's still okay. We still have nine there. We still have six hatch. Like, the, the potential to macro is way up there. And there they go. There's a lot of eggs being built right now. But it's getting dangerous because we still have the Reaver. Plus one has finished for the Zealot. We've got Sayers actually building now. We're actually on five. And five gates. You can make a surprising amount of units, especially when they're Zealots, quite quickly. Yeah, let's we'll see. Um, June, a very small group of Hydras engaging with Zealots. Don't like that as much. Needs to wait for her full army to come out. Yeah, and look at his supplies. Avonhoki actually had 100 grit. Oh, actually we have 8 gates for Avonhoki. I didn't even realize, so that's a lot of production. But Junbi has equaling amount of production in the 6 hatcheries. The thing is, is are the Hydras going to be enough? That's so many Hydras. Beware the storms. Okay, Templars are out just now. Those are insanely late. Um, like, they're not going to have Storm for another couple um, minutes. And great are Reaver shots, though, on those Hydras. He's going to hold on now. But, yeah. oh, the Templars can get sniped. So the Reaver also got sniped. So this is just pure Zealot Cannon. And this is a lot of Hydras, but I actually don't think it's enough to push back all these zealots. Oh, there's a storm, but it's kind of a whiff. And not the best storm. Oh, this this has full energy. Okay, now, get that to was the a good one. Though. And now all of a sudden, there's only three hydras versus two zealots, and we have eight gate. Remember that the zealot count is getting quite high. Corsairs are on the left side of the map. Don't know how many kills they've gotten so far, but that will be quite annoying for the zerg to deal with. Oh no, we ran over a Hydra Ball. Uh oh, what's in this drop? We just sell it. It's not too dangerous. They're just going to die to the Hydra list. But now I'm worried for Avonhoki because I see lurkers out in the middle of the map. We don't have any detect. Okay, we have an observer, but we don't have any goons. Yeah, observer. Okay, there's. Yeah, so you're right. No, go no goons means not really able to fight the lurkers. So. Oh man. Oh man, we have six lurkers coming out, so seven, and now, unlike the game with Doc Holiday, there's actually going to be a lot to buffer these these lurkers. Oh, the Templar on the side! Okay, still no mana on the High Templar for Storm. Um, it's not going to be out in time. <laughs> Just dancing around, there's a Reaver here, I'm trying to hold on, but there's... Where's the Reaver? Oh, there it is. With the... Lurkers at now, you can start to siege forward. And Avon, he's trying really hard, but I don't think. Oh, okay, good Reaver shots. Needs to get those High Templars. Gets the Reaver. Okay, that was the, oh, the most storm. disgusting storm ever. <laughs> oh my god. Could it have been better? But look how much production Junbi has. There's just nothing here for. Yeah, and lost that shuttle too with, I think, two High Templars in it. And great storm again. Wow, these storms have been so fat, getting everything. But now the lurkers are burrowing and the natural is falling. GG's called. June. June one. Yeah, June B really on top of their macro. Avonhoki had amazing storms, but just not enough. The eight gate kicked in a little bit too slow. His reverse did a lot of damage in the beginning too. So. 
Again, we floated a lot of money though. This kind of just, you know, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Mystic in the chat saying, hello, what's going on, man? I see what's work. You all right? Um, yeah, so game number two is going on to Fighting Spirit. Protoss is picking the Fighting Spirit. Not a huge surprise there. Yeah, Fighting Spirit. Probably the best Protoss for Zerg map. As Doc will agree. Um, there we go. Alrighty. Game number two. Can Avon Hokey bring it back? So, Avon Hokey's kind of going for this unorthodox style. I guess. Like, he's going for the Reaver tech, but he's not going for serves and that doesn't really work i don't know i don't know what to say about that yeah reaver sare uh is more common but that's a very difficult build to pull off when we were watching the game play out i thought it was gonna be goon reaver because they kind of combo really well mm -hmm. and as you pointed out if they even get too scourged kind of the shuttle just dies but Ivan Hokey was playing defensive with it, so I think it was actually okay. He can get the Zealot count really high, and then the Reaver kind of just wards off the Hydras. So I think it was actually okay. And then as the game went on, he ended up building Corsairs. He just didn't build them initially. Right. So Mr. Ivan Hokey going for another expansion build. We've got the pylon on the low ground probably going to be a forge but i've been told that on fighting spirit actually gateway expands are quite popular here because of how easily i think it's how easily they deal with over pools and nine pool builds yeah gate first is pretty common i think we'll see a 11 forge from avid yeah that probe coming down now he's gonna build the forge i'm pretty confident in that and June B just going for an overpool build. Everything just standard so far from both players. Okay, just want to point out the build for Haven Hokey that is not correct. Um, want to place the forge here, and then the gateway here. Um, if you put the gateway right here, it's not going to be ling tight in this direction. You're going to have so many holes to plug. And I keep using him as a sample, but Doc Holiday will exploit that, and Zerg to our not manor will send 30 speedlings down your throat and you will lose. Um, so yeah, you gotta hit the forge on that side. There's actually a, a like a website somebody's put out, like SE Wallens that you can check out. You can see them all. And I think they're pretty much all correct. Yeah, I've seen that site. That's that's really nice. I personally just go into single player and just go to every base and just experiment with what I think is best. That's how I actually found a lot of the walls in uh, Terran vs. Zerg and how I know that certain position or certain depot plus command center walls are ling type, not just zealot type. And if you know stuff like that, all of a sudden you can get away with murder. <laughs> skipping out on a lot of stuff like you build one marine. I'm just throwing an example. You build one marine to, you know, counter three zealots. I know this is an absurd, absurd example. But I'm just I'm just throwing it out. Instead of building five marines, you build one. And that's a lot of minerals that could be going into SCVs faster or gas faster. Wow. I think it's scary though living on the edge there. Yeah, you, you really have to know what you're doing to do that. If you misplace it, well, all of a sudden you just lose. And I've I have had that happen a few times. Like I put it down and I'm like, oh. That's actually off and I just die. So Yeah. I mean, I, I struggled with builds a lot. I think I got Fighting Spirit, Circuit Breakers, I got mapped out pretty well. Sometimes I screwed up, but nine times out of ten on whatever I spawn is, I get it right. Some maps, though, like Tower Cross, forget it. You, there's no there's no way to wall that correctly. I, mm. There is, but it's like nobody really knows how to wall at Tower Cross. It's just nuts. Yeah, some maps are just unwallable, like Aztec is pretty trash, yeah, I'm sure you know. Uh, but anyways, in this game we've got Avon Hokey, he's got his gate down, he's going into a simulator. He's 
Going into the cybernetics, and again, Junbi with the fast there, everything standard for them so far. Looking exactly like the last game, and I'm loving it. Um, so, we'll see Avenhoki is behind in gas right now. His build is behind maybe 15 seconds or something like that, or a bit more. Um, typically, you can get your Stargate if everything's optimal between 415 and 420, and he's getting it at about 440 here. Um, I think that could be just because his, you know, Forge Gateway and gas timings were off a bit. But look, this, this um, Stargate's not even going down until 450. That's a full 30 seconds about delay. And now this um, June's Spire isn't super on time either it's it's um better than avon's but i'm saying there's the spire to stargate timing but like if you're if you're on time with your stargate at 415 then you can usually get an overlord kill if your opponent is behind and that's a nice plus overlord kill plus scouting because you know of course you always want to scout first with sarah's but just getting that overlord kill is nice yeah, that's true. Getting this Sare out is super important. Even if it doesn't kill anything, you really need to see what Zerg's doing. And if he saw this, he would know that probably a Hydra follow-up is coming. I don't think I've ever seen a passive game where Zerg takes three bases at these positions. It's always an aggressive Hydra build. Uh, but yeah, the Sare is a little late. Spire's almost done for June B. I think that this Sare might barely be able to get in and see what's going on. I actually see some Lings being produced from June B. That makes me think, what is this going to be a Ling flood or is this just initial defense for the Zealots? Yeah, I think it's just defense. I say put my money 19 times out of 20. June is going to go for a 5 hatch Hydra. Yeah, we're setting up for it. We've got the fourth hatch down. I think this drone at the bottom middle was told to build a hatchery, but it glitched out. Probably the egg blocked it. I hate when that happens. But Avonhoki did just get a full scout into the main. There was no Scourge built. And so that's a great scout from him. He knows what's going on. He saw that the extractor went down at the Nat 2. So he knows that this is probably going to be a lot of hydro pressure. If you don't have this second gas as Zerg, you know, you can't build a lot of Hydra, so this is a, a pretty big tell for what Zerg is doing. Uh, looks like Avin build kind of bit um, in terms of plus one, but Legs is actually going to be done on time, and a much better time Templar Archives than last time, so he's going to make this push out with he's only got three zealots though, what's four? Um, he got a second gateway, but actually that's not necessary. If you just have your one gateway and you constantly build zealots out of it, you can have um, six zealots out by the 7.30 minute mark. Uh, you can get a second one if you're trying to go for like a uh, eight zealot archon build. Then you get a second gate around like five minutes. But in this case, you don't really need that one. And Avonhoki has just been idle with this gateway a lot of time. So it's just... It's suboptimal. It's true, you can actually get a surprising amount of units out off of even one or two gates. Um, but Avid Hokey, he is. He did get his Templar Archive on time. He's actually got Templar's Storm almost completed by now. And that's going to be exactly what he needs because we got Hydra's in production for June. We already got about 10 at the natural. Going to be looking to put on some pressure pretty soon. I think we've got range about halfway done. We've got... <laughs> okay, we have the evolution chamber at the third base. No plus weapon damage for the Hydras yet, but I'm sure that will start any moment now. And there he goes. He's out on the map looking to put on some pressure. So, Avonhoki's moving out with these Sares. Um, Zealot's going to kind of miss the Hydras. And there's two cannons here. They're in pretty terrible positions, or the second one is. But... See, plus two has started right away. Where are the Templars? They're coming out. 
but he almost could use DTs right now. Um, but June actually going to go all the way back home to defend the third, because that's the correct choice. I just realized there was nothing there. But these Sarah's going to start getting onto a Overlord, and the Zealot's engaging with these some of these Lings, so that's nice. Yeah, and these Zealots, they have plus one. They are not weak. A lot of damage out. The Hydras are spread out. Like, we've got four Hydras versus five Zealots. A lot of damage going down. Even a full drone pull. It's a lot of wasted mining. But we did trade our whole Zealot army right there. But we have Templars already made for Abin Hoki. So a counterattack will not deal a lot of damage. You remember the storms from last game? They're absolutely absurd. So if he has any storms like that this game, he's just going to absolutely wipe the floor with these Hydras. Absolutely, and the gateways, he's adding them on. He's getting up to, he's got a Robo 2. So, I'm trying to see what his gate count is. Okay, he's going to be up to like 5 here in a second. Um, but, looks like Avonhoki is going to try to maybe do this 8 gate pressure off of 2 base. Which, like, if you're going 8 gate, then you really should be attacking like by 9 or 10 minutes. So, but that's tier 3, so it's not going to be quite optimal. But still, I think Evan Hoki's going to be a de decent position here because if he death balls, death balls here with Storm, not a great Storm, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. He's getting his Zealot count up high. He's building more Templars. He's got a lot of, a decent amount of gateways. He's got four gates. And remember, he did deal a bit of damage to the third base of Junebee. Now I see a lot of Overlords out going out on the map. They've already got speed wonder if we've got drops already upgraded. I don't think we do, but Lurker aspect has started. And that's worrisome for Avonhoki because we really need to start pumping out some Dragoons, but right now we've only got Zillet Templar. Oh, he's moving out. Okay, um, I'd like to see some goons here, but can the Stormers be clutch? Uh, no. Okay, one whiff the bed. The second one, will it? Hmm. He needs to have the Templars on a different hockey than his Zealots right now. That's hurting him a bit. Yeah, and I'm worried for Avonhoki because... Whoa, what's going on? I'm worried because we don't have Dragoons, and now I see Lurkers coming out. Hydras are... You know, there's still a decent amount of Hydras. Oh, the Storm! Ooh, nice. The thing is, like, there's no Goons here, and the nice thing with Storms, you bait them forward, they take a bunch of hits. He needs to morph those into Archons right now. Mm. Yeah, now... Oh, man. He, he got a couple Lurkers right there, killing the egg. But this is getting dangerous for Avonhoki. He needs to bust out quickly, because once it, we're seeing five, six Lurkers, Zealots are going to absolutely shred it. He has a lot of Templars, though. And I see that we are making some Dragoons, but no range yet. Mm. Yeah, need to start range a bit earlier than this. Um, and I'd li really like to see him get Archons. It looks like he's going to morph one. Is he? Okay. Nice, nice pick off there. Getting getting one Lurker, getting a Hydra also. And now I th he's decided that he can move out. That's... Oh, uh, that one Lurker. This is what you're talking about. This is what you're talking about earlier, about how precious observers are. That's the only detection Protoss has. Like, they don't have scan, they don't have a hundred overlords. Once this observer goes down, this one lurker can survive forever. And if he moves that, okay, good storm. Um, so gets, there's no more lurker, okay, one's burrowing here. A great storm again, but there's just no, like, oh. thing is, there's only zealots here. So there's no follow up after the great storms. Yeah, the storms have been unreal, getting so many Hydra kills, and here comes the reinforce. But Junbi's doing a great job reinforcing themselves. Like, there's so many Hydras consistently here with these Lurkers. Yeah, so... Avonhoki pushing them back, but the problem is, is that... June's on three bases, and Avonhoki's banking so much minerals. June needs to expand. He's take a fourth and a fifth here because he absolutely can when he's got uh, products contained on two bases. 
Yeah, Jumbi, uh, we see a drone going out to bottom left. It's exactly what they need to do. Supplies are really close, and that's, that's going to be difficult for Protoss. Usually Protoss is a little bit higher. Avin Hoki, he's got a lot of gateways. If he can get out one or two more production cycles, that's what, wow, he's putting out so many gates. We're at 12 gate. That's a lot. 13 gate even. That's a lot of production for him. Yeah, just, I, I've said this a couple times, I don't keep beating it, but, like, you need goons. Like, zealots really depreciate value once lurkers are out. Um, they really do. Another thing is they get splashed with the storms. You need a solid core of goons when you're fighting lurkers. Um, have some zealots, but then you need archons and goons. So, that's just recognizing when you need to switch there is something that will move Avinoki into the next level of play against Zergs. Recognizing when you need to start the goon pump and look at range just started now. And like you said, range, what are the long step rates in the game? So that's not going to be out for Neon. Yeah, and now our army is almost pure zealot. There's just so many lurkers out and even more getting produced. It's almost... <laughs> Protoss in this position, it's almost impossible for Protoss to break out. And by the time they break out, you know, Zerg has the whole map. So you break out just to, you know, not really break out because there's just tons of units waiting for you. And actually, but we do have. Yeah. I was going to say, Avon Hoki moving some zealots down to the third. Um, actually, a bit ago, I would have liked to see him been active, like moving the zealots through that angle. Like the third's pretty exposed if he gets in on some angles, the third of June. And get some decent drone kills here that can um, threaten the Zerg economy, even the natural. Like, two control groups of Zealots, or even a control group, in, in there, that for a ton of drones, it's a good trade, and that's a trade he'll take. Yeah, and now June B is actually not pushing up this ramp, and this might let Avonhoki get this third base, and if Avonhoki gets this third base, He's actually not in a bad spot. Of course, it's going to be very difficult to go through the bridges or go down. But at least he will have an economy. He's got a lot of production. He's doing really well on his upgrades. We already almost have plus three. To have plus three this fast at 17 minutes, actually pretty damn good. And now with all these 13 gates, he's got a lot of Dragoons. So it looks like um, Avonhoki is deathballing a bit here. The only thing is, is that he needs to... He's actually doing a pretty good job of it. He just... When he, when he comes in for attack, he's got to be coordinated. He can't um, just kind of even... Not even drag selecting, but he, he's got to be confident moving in and make sure he has the right units in the right place. Zealots in the front, um, know where your storms are, get some more Archons, because if you just kind of funnel your units across through this into this concave of the Zerg, it's going to get really bad for you. Um, and it's actually just so hard to fight here because he's going to have to bring OBS out and there's an Overlord for sniping. So it's so tough for Protoss to move out here. Yeah, he's just bottled up right now. He does have this bay. He really does need to get a Reaver or something. Reaver combined with Coon Storm is one of the hardest things to deal with. I'm just consistently watching more and more lurkers get added to this army. The one thing that is going for Avonhoki is that if he does break it, he's got a huge upgrade advantage. And the entire army of Junbi is Hydra lurkers. There's no supporting Lings. There's no supporting, you know, Defiler or anything. It's pure Hydra lurker. That's it. Look at the idle probes of Avonhoki so much. He really needs to bust here and try to get a fourth, or even just move some of those probes down to the third. Yeah, he's on one base now. Supplies are exactly even. He's, he's got to get out, but it, it's just so hard. The concave is huge for Zerg. You've got lurkers. Your observers constantly get sniped. Okay, you see, moving out with these small groups, well, he's going to actually pick up a couple lurkers. That's nice, but trading a bunch of goons, you just do that all at once. You know, one thing I would really like to see from Avinoki is start getting OBS upgrades, get a range and speed. That would really make his army more effective. 
But meanwhile, he's moving forward and he just he's waffling. That's the thing is, if you're not decisive, you'll just lose 20 supply of units and then, oh, Zerg's ahead. So, it's just, this is brutal from, from Adam. Yeah, this is, this is ruthless. Just more and more workers constantly being made. And, like, what do you do? Like, you move out, you go into a funnel, get... Not only do lurkers, you know, hit you from a distance and you can't see them, they also do splash damage, so you're just getting massacred from all angles. Oh, this is a nightmare. And if the Zergs, um, their builds on time, they should have uh, Dark Swarm by now, so... It's gonna make this game even tougher. Yeah, and Jinbi has Hive, actually has a lot of drones sitting at the natural, so a lot of doing a really good job producing the drones just needs to transfer them to bottom left. Like, e Jinbi's econ is absolutely crazy. Yeah, she's maxed here. It's great. We have good upgrades for Jinbi at 1-1. One, one. Now we've started double or triple upgrades now also we're even kicking into ling upgrades and once lings come out with crack <laughs> versus a mass goon army that's that's it it's like you're dead you're dead but i don't just i just don't ever see protoss getting out this concave good lord like that's one of the those are two of the best storms i've ever seen and it just doesn't matter yeah the thing is like yeah zerg's already maxed again he you gotta be decisive. You gotta win this when you're like 30 supply ahead. You have to make a strong attack where you lay your storm down, storms out ahead of time, get some archons, get your goons, and you gotta go full forward. You can't go back and forth with the thing. At a certain point, you just have to go for it and make it happen. But having Hoki here, hey, he sacked his army and got maybe 40 supply of Junes, but. Jun's economy, like you said, so good here that it doesn't even matter. Yeah, and now the supplies just plummeted for the Protoss. Junbi really on top of the macro, still at 160 supply. Avenhoki, like, literally no joke. Those are the best storms I've probably ever seen in a game. It's just that we can't get out. The, the contain is too strong from the Zerg player. Yeah, it's... Like, yeah, those storms were amazing, but Av Avon is dead here. Um, I mean, now it looks like this Protoss could potentially get out, but now we have Cracklings. And this is actually even harder to get out of than just a pure Lurker Hydra. God, that's so many units. Cracklings are oh. absolutely just absolutely disgusting. Yeah, they're so they're cost effective. Nuts. Um, and the funny thing is, like, you need a different composition for Crackling Worker than you do for Hydra. Oh man, Avonhook is just a slow death for him. I feel bad. He hasn't been able to get past his bridge the entire game. And there's even a Lurker contain on the right side. It's not like Wrench versus Swag Money where he could have busted down and done a flank. He can't even flank this. There's nowhere for him to go. Yeah, we see Avinoki coming out with a storm drop here. Although, look at June's vision of this map. Very nice. Got a full concave of everything. Yeah, Avinoki getting desperate. We see a drop going to the left side, but not a huge army on top of it. Overlords were sitting there, and June be saw it. And, okay, here goes Avinoki. I imagine that it's got to be move outs from him we're down to one base and we're not really getting anywhere yeah we go in and go out uh yeah and this is brutal the storm drop it's i mean it's been seen so many times it must have but even if he lands the storm so nicely with the drones kills every single drone doesn't matter um, EG Legend Killer asking, what do you build against Crackling? Well, Crackling, you need more, um, Archons, um, ar and Archons, and then you switch, you get more Zealots then. So, you know, heavier Archon eventually into Reaver, but... So, yeah, you need a lot of fight units. 
Like Archons against a ton of Hydras aren't as good. Yeah. In this specific scenario, what do you do? I, I to be honest, I don't think there is anything you can do. And maybe the only option was if you somehow got an Arbiter and was able to recall across the map, because then at least half of your army gets somewhere. Right now, we're not getting anywhere. It's just brutal from the Zerg. Well, I think there was a spot where Avin Hoki might have been able to bust. But then he kept doing the thing where he moved all his goons forward and sniped a couple lurkers, but lost everything else. I don't know. I'm just looking. Like, there's so many units here. Every time I look, there's just hundreds of Ling Lurker and Hydras. I mean, if a Zerg's max, you're dead, basically. Yeah, Most I mean, Zerg's really strong once Hive kicks in, especially with upgrades. And then something that a lot of Protoss is underrate is... First off, Protoss units, they take full damage on shields. It doesn't matter the damage type. It doesn't matter what your unit type is. You take full damage from the shields. And look at Avon Hoki's upgrades. we got this plus zero shields. That means if Zerg's... You know, get plus three, plus two wings. Plus three is almost double damage for a wing, and you're taking full damage each time. Plasma shield is actually highly, like, insanely important in this matchup. Hmm. It's, yeah, that's um. I definitely would probably delay that way too much. It's interesting. Now, Avin Hoki has gotten a probe to the left side, but. Zerg saw it. Yeah, we've got lanes just coming in and gonna shut it down immediately. Jumbi is not letting up on Avonhoki. I mean, Jumbi's playing it basically how you're supposed to play it. Avonhoki, he's going for it again. Amazing storm, but everything's getting bottled on the bridge. This, yeah. I mean, we were talking earlier, like, what do you do to against this? What do you do is you don't let it get to the stage of the game where you're pending against the bridge, pretty much. Yeah, once this happens, it's near impossible. Um, it's just so hard to get out. Uh, Junbi's playing it perfectly. I can't take away credit for playing like this. It's, you know... A lot of people will say, like, oh, he's playing so lame, he just sits there the whole time. Hey, it's a strategy. It's a good strategy, too, because eventually they'll mine out. Yeah. And also, I mean, June's not been slacking in Mecha either. Like, expanding, having good drone counts, upgrades as well. Yeah, like, we've got more than 10 hatcheries. Zerg has crazy econ. Every base I see has great saturation like Junbi's playing exactly how you need to play and now we're taking bases on Protoss's side of the map so even if Protoss busts out any minerals taken on that side of the map are minerals he can't get yeah you know what Protoss, Protoss needs to do right now mind control a drone and get blinding cloud uh. and then Wait, does, does Blinding Cloud stop Lurker Spines? I actually don't even know. Dark Swarm? I'm sorry, Dark Swarm. No, it doesn't stop. I wish it stopped Lurker Spines. I mean, it stops Hydras. Yeah, it, yeah, it stops Hydras. It stops range attacks that um, don't splash, basically. I don't know Sea why. Shanks... Yeah. Sea Chains get stopped, but their splash damage does damage. If you angle it, like if you, yeah, if the splash is, wherever, whatever angle the tank is shooting from, it comes back towards that direction of the tank. So if you have, let's say you have two lurkers set up next to each other. If you shoot the one in the back, it's likely the one in the front will get splashed. So Mystic is, yes, I am. I, I'm a Brewer player, Mystic. I was... I mean, I played Brood War first, and then for a couple years in Heart of the Swarm, I played SE2. Um, but I'm a Brood War player hardcore now. I The reason I said Blinding Cloud is I was looking at Mystic, who's a SE2 um, friend of mine. 
in plan, so that's why I thought Blind Cloud starts too. But, anyways, Avanoki's making his last ditch effort. Nice storms and decent trades, but oh, the High Templar's out in the middle. Yeah, this has got to be Avanoki's last stand. We're not mining at mid, right? We're not mining at. We've got so many units here. But Junbi just has so many units also. Actually, that one small drop he did to the left side has actually drawn a lot of Junbi's army out of position. And now the Lurkers are exposed, but doesn't know the Templars just got massacred. He needed to morph those into Archons. Though. Looking, that was making me so nervous. He's basically, basically body blocking with those Templars, which is not a good strategy. Uh, I think this is it. We're not mining. Junpei, uh, despite all that that just happened, we're still at 170 supply. Oh, man. Really on top of the macro this game, and the contain has been ruthless. Never letting up on that contain, never giving an inch. Every time he's moved across that bridge, just instantly jumps on him. have an Archon and two Templars. They are the hope. They are the dream. Oh, they gotta watch for that Scourge. There, no. there are so many Scourge. This is like, Oaken, this, the Temple, um, Shuttle needs to double back through. Okay, he's gonna drop into nothing. Archon doing work, the top left, I believe. Got 15 kills already. He needs to have about 150 more. There we go. We're adding up now. Oh, oh my God. God. That was Storm, but he loses. Okay, gets out with one. With six HP left. The dream is live. It is it's alive. Fly right into Scourge if he's not careful. Oh, oh my gosh. This is CPL tier three. This is this is what This is the tier three life. Look at Ooh. how many probes he has at mid right. <laughs> that's Holy. Nuts. That's a lot. Yo Mystic is a, I do I mean I used to stream in the summer. Um been super busy, but I'll stream like maybe Friday night or something like that. Sure, I'll stream some. And I'll link you, man. Junpei still, still would not give up this bridge. Never attack style. Oh my gosh, I would be so angry. I would have left by now. I've been so mad that I can't get across the bridge after the first two or three pushes. Man, but Avan is... Hokey, he's a fighter. He will not give up. Yeah, man. And the thing is, like, it's always way less painful for June. Like, I'm sure June doesn't really care. Like. He can just actually just build like a wall with hatcheries if he wanted to. And Ivan Hokey going again, but this time this has got to be possible. And storms are on point, but no support. Even if we had support, we can't get out. Ooh, last hitch storm. This is it. This is it. GG is called. Wow. A 32 minute game, which probably could have been 20, but that's okay. Look at the resources from Trinity 70k really on top of the map for that game relentless with the contain that's exactly what you should do on there you have to do whatever it takes to win you don't have to play you don't have to attack all the time as you set up a contain like that just let the fight come to you 